In this video, I'd like to talk about how to produce and manage a Microsoft Teams Live event. Teams Live events are perfect for a large-scale presentation, currently up to 10,000 people. When you need a one-to-many presentation style, I think you'll find this tool to be incredibly helpful. In a previous video, I showed you how to schedule a meeting, and I also talked about the different roles that people have. We'll be focusing on the producer and presenter experience. Let's get started. Once scheduled, you'll see the Teams live event, both on your Teams calendar, as well as on your Outlook calendar. I'm going to be starting and managing this event from Microsoft Teams. So I'll click here. This is where we'd get our attendee link. Once this link is copied, I can share it with people in a calendar invite, maybe in a Teams channel, or just email it to them. As far as this style of invitation goes, it's built for me, the organizer, and my event team. We have Redwood, which is a large auditorium, we have John Keller as a presenter, and we also have Samantha Byrne as a presenter. Here's information about our event, as well as a join and chat button. As I scroll down, we can cancel the meeting. We can see live event resources here, but they're not available until after the event. So I'll show you those later on. Here's our description, as well as a link. It's always a good idea to check and make sure that things look good before you get started. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click here on Edit. I can also invite additional presenters even change people from a presenter to a producer, or even remove them. I'm also going to click down here on Settings. When I schedule this meeting, I chose permissions, as in people in groups, org-wide, or make this a public event. I've chosen to make this public, and that means it's open to anyone, even people outside the organization. In fact, they don't even need to sign in. Also, how am I going to produce this live event? I'm going to use Teams, and I do want a recording available, captions, an attendee engagement report, and I'd like to engage the attendees with a Q&A session with interactive questions and answers. Things look good, so I'm going to choose Update. The event isn't for another 40 minutes or so, but I recommend going in early and making sure that things are set up, your audio, and your video is perfect. You'll absolutely want to rehearse and practice, practice, practice. These events are very highly produced and you'll just want to make sure that things go well. Typically, your event team, as in producers and presenters, will log in about half an hour early. Then I'd suggest starting the event 10 minutes early, because then you can have an opening slide, and people are going to know that they're in the right place. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to open the event. Things are looking good, so we'll click Join. I'm going to join as a producer, but this is another opportunity for us to make sure that things are good. I can test my camera, make sure that works. I want to make sure that the lighting is good, that my camera is working, and I'm ready to present. Right here I can choose to mute or unmute, and I'd recommend clicking here on settings. It's important to make sure that audio and video is working properly. So I'll take a look and make sure that I've selected the correct speaker and microphone, also that I have the correct camera. This is a toggle for what's called auditorium mode where we can optimize the sound like the large auditorium Redwood that I scheduled. This could include things like applause or audience laughter. One thing that you might find to be beneficial is to make a test call. To test your call quality, record a short message after the beep. Then your message will be played back to you. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. If you're happy with the quality of your message, then you've configured Teams correctly. If not, check your device settings and try again. I've run the test and I can see that my microphone is connected, my speaker, my camera, and my network is good. If you need to, you can always click here on device settings and make any changes that you need. I'm going to choose close. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to choose join now. On the top left, we can see the name of the event, how long it's been going on, we can also tell we have zero attendees and that it's pre-live. That means we can set things up and when we're ready, we can present our content. We can now see that one attendee is joined, but from their perspective, they'll see a message the live event hasn't started. It's okay if people come in early because you get to choose when it starts. Let's take a look at the top right of this interface. We could leave the event if we need to. We can click here and see health and performance information. If we click here, we can see that live event Q&A. If you don't see this, that means the box wasn't checked. As I mentioned before, this is a great way to engage your audience. Both presenters and producers have access to this. 
This is where we can open or close the QA. I'm going to make an announcement. I'll click and choose send. The attendees will see this, where they can see that moderator announcement. On the bottom, they can ask a question, even before the event starts. They can optionally put in their name, or post as anonymous. Again, this interaction can happen before, during, and after the event, and we can see that there's a new one. Anonymous is asking, is a recording available? Currently, this is private, but I'm going to publish it, and then choose Reply. This way, everyone will be able to see. Again, the Q&A is designed to interact with attendees. These are shared notes for the live event team. That means they're accessible before, during, and after the event. Next is Chat. We can see meeting activity, as well as chat with others, but the attendees can't see this. This is just for producers and presenters. Next, we have the participant list. We can always invite people now or send a link. Like we saw before, this is an area for device settings. We have audio, speaker, and microphone. We have our camera. And we also have an option for that auditory mode I was talking about, as well as options for live captions. On the left, we have what's called the queue. And that's a holding area for video or content that we'd like to present. On the right, we have the actual live event screen. Like we saw before, the attendees see the live event hasn't started. But when I'm ready, I could put up a slide, start the event, and have more content queued up on the left. Then when I'm ready, I'll just send it live. Over here, we'll see two different options. One is a single source, and the other is content left. This way, we have content here, but if we want to, we can add video and have that talking head during the presentation. I'll just click here and add my video. This event is still pre-live, and we can see that Samantha Byrne, a presenter, has just arrived. Presenters can share their video, content, as well as interact with attendees live with the QA. As people begin joining, I'd like them to see an opening slide. So I'm going to click here on Share. This is where I can choose to show my desktop. Since I have two monitors set up, I have a chance to show either Screen 1 or Screen 2. Also, if you'd like to show a video or other content that has audio, it's really important to check this box, which is Include System Audio. Otherwise, the audience won't be able to hear. I'll click here on my slide deck, and what happens is I'll see a red line around the application that I'm sharing. We also have this floating window that we can move to another screen or click on to return to that main area. Now I can see the content that I'd like to share down here on the bottom. I started the PowerPoint, and now I can see that it's queued up and ready to go. The attendees can't see anything yet, but the presenters can see what I'm about to share. And again, if I'd like to change my layout, I can click here, then choose to add video from below. Otherwise, my video would take up the whole screen. I'm going to turn my video on, then choose to add it. This means they'll be able to see my presentation, but they'll also see my talking head. When I'm ready, I'll choose Send Live. Things are still pre-live, but what I'd like to do is queue up my video. So first I'll turn my video on, then select it. There we go. They're seeing the opening slide, and when I'm ready to talk, I'll turn this on and they'll be able to see a full screen of me. Okay, let's start the event. I'm going to click here and start, and we get a notification. Once we start, we can't stop and restart. This event can last up to 16 hours, and there's also a 10 to 20 second delay for the attendees. That delay is going to allow the video to get ready in the background and provide that on-demand experience. We'll choose Continue, and our event is now live. At this time, I'd like to stay muted, but if I'd like to make an announcement, I'll just briefly unmute. This is what the attendees will see. There's a little indication down here that it's live, and other presenters are going to see something very similar. Now let's have Samantha present some of her content. One thing you might want to watch out for or be aware of as a team is that if a presenter shows their screen, it's going to override what's showing right here on the live event. She'll be able to show her desktop, include system audio, or share an application like Excel, for example. And now Samantha Burns' desktop is live. Here, we're back at the attendee view, 
where they can always click here, ask a question, and send it. I can see there's a new question. Are these materials available? I'm going to send a private reply and then send that back. To show a little bit more functionality, I'm going to click here on Share, change the layout, turn on my video, and then send live. Here's an example where I've shared my content and my video, and I've queued up my full screen video. When I'm ready to share that, I'll just send that live and continue with my presentation. Once we've completed our live event, all we need to do is click here on end. Remember, once you end it, you can't restart it. We did it. Our live event has ended and I'm going to click leave. Now you'll notice in our chat, we have this all staff annual event thread. We have our chat, we have files that we've potentially shared, meeting notes, as well as a shared whiteboard. I'm very happy with the way this event went. I'm going to click here on calendar, open the event, and check out my live event resources. Here I can download a recording, I can download my Q&A report, the attendee engagement report. If I'd like to, I can disable the recording for attendees, and I can also download the transcript. The Q&A report as well as the attendee engagement report can be viewed in Excel. The transcript is a VTT file, which can be uploaded for closed captions, and it's easily previewed and edited within the notepad. Here's an example of what the Q&A report looks like. Remember, at this time, we can have up to 10,000 attendees. So having all this information in Excel is going to be really helpful. And this is what the attendee report looks like. With Teams Live Events, you can structure and deliver those large broadcast style events to reach your employees, customers, and business partners. Seamless and engaging, people can access this from anywhere in the world at any time, regardless of where your presenters or audience are located. And that is how to produce and manage a live event in Microsoft Teams. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more quick tips on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. If you'd like to see more in-depth videos or perhaps would like customized training on Microsoft 365 applications, please check out our website at www.knowledgewave.com. The KnowledgeWave Learning Site offers access to thousands of on-demand videos and trainings that are constantly updated to address all of the newest features that Microsoft has to offer. Visit our site or call us today to learn more.